In this video, I'm going to update the railing in my house to something modern and fresh. Let me show you how it went. Dun, dun, dun. The first thing I did was demo, which is really easy. I grabbed a sawzall and first started with cutting through the top rail connecting each post. The bottom is held in with a few 16 gauge nails, but once the section flips over, it's easy enough to pry it right off. I repeated that on the other two railing sections. A tip is to lay cardboard out around your work area to protect your floors. With the post, I was hoping that I could cut off the top section and then the bottom fat portion would be concealing the attachment method. However, once I lopped off the head, the post was actually as solid as can be. But no problem, let's just try a different approach. After cutting the post even further down to the floor, I tried a variety of tools to try and break up what was remaining and picked it apart one bit at a time. It worked, but not very well, and it was definitely slow going. So I changed approaches again. While at this post, I decided to remove the baseboards. Next, I went ahead and cut down the remaining post to get rid of most of the material. Now I could have an easier time at getting these down to a flat state. To do this, I hopped on the inside of the stairs and took my time with a Sawzall to make this happen. By cutting from the stairs direction, I was able to cut towards the tile in the room. Once I was able to cut most of the way from both sides, I used a rubber mallet to hit the remaining chunk off. Perfect. And that already makes a huge difference. You can see on the back wall, the post that was attached to the wall created some drywall damage. No problem. That just meant I tried my hand at drywall repair, which in my opinion, went pretty well. Okay, okay, now that it's torn down, let's start putting it back together, starting with the baseboard. I cut and painted new baseboards with just three quarter inch scrap I found in my shop. Then I painted it black to match my railing. And these should line the entire area and I made mine rise above my tile by roughly a quarter of an inch, but that can be customized. I used my 18 gauge nailer to stick them in place. And just like that, I am ready to start installing the new railing. For my system, I'm going with View Rail. I used this beautiful system on the massive floating deck at my commercial property and was blown away at how easy it was to install, even on a complex build, but also how sturdy and beautiful it is. Even two years later, it still looks brand new. One thing I love is there's not only a ton of options available to choose from to match your personal style, but once you pick out your system, it ships right to your door. Not only are all the components protected and clearly labeled, but the hardware is the same. To start setting the post, I pulled a tape the entire length of the long side, then spaced out my post evenly, using a small piece of tape to easily mark the post as well as the placement needed on the floor. Most of the posts have holes on two sides, and I made sure that they were facing the correct direction. Then, after lining it up in the center of that black baseboard, I marked the hole locations using a pencil. This will allow me to move the post and pre-drill for the lags that will attach it to the ground. I get all four lags started in their holes before driving them in all the way. Once I do, I put on a post level. Oops, you can't see it in the frame. Sorry about that. But a post level reads plumb on two sides of a post. Based on what level says, I use a composite shim to get the post perfectly plumb in both directions. These composite shims are great as you stick in how much of a spacer is needed and you just break off the extra once it's perfect. I repeated that same process on the remaining posts. Next up is to add on the top rail. The view rail system comes with an easy to attach hardware that slides right on the underside of the metal top rails. If you use wood, then the hardware is attached with screws instead. Either way, the railing is set on top of the post and attached using the included hardware. Since I have a corner on this setup, I cut both rails out of 45 where they meet up in the corner. Very satisfying to watch it all come together. I went to each post and tightened down on the hardware to secure the railing to the post. I capped off the end of the railing with an included cap 
Then I started on the last major step, which is adding in the cables. This part is fun because it all buttons up so quickly and seeing the change is exciting. The cables come shipped to you just like everything else. And I personally started with the shorter side to get my groove of the process before moving to the long side. To attach the cables, a stinger of sorts is placed in the end of each cable. And they're held on by using a crimper to crimp down on the material. Now they are ready to be fed in, which can be tricky because they come in one long length. In my setup, feeding in from the right wasn't an option because I have a wall there. So instead, I fed them in from the left and stuck the majority of the cable out my dog to hoard to allow me to work it in to the start of the run. I would also recommend getting a helping hand on this part. You can certainly feed in the cable alone, but it goes much quicker with two people and feeds in more smoothly. You can look at the rods before feeding them in and work out any slight bends or curves in the material. And this will prevent the cables from scratching themselves up as they are being fed through the holes of the post. However, also know that the touch up paint from view rail works amazingly. So any small scratches will never be noticed. Once all the cable is fed in, the next thing to do is put a tensioning sleeve on the end of the run. The finger I placed on the end of each cable will feed into the sleeve and gives me a way to attach the cable to the end post and tension the entire length as the last step. Once the end post is handled, I go back to the end where I started the run and left all the cables wild. I mark their position with tape and then back out each one so that I can cut them to length. This is simple enough with a right angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. Once that's done, I dress the end of the cable the same way as the other end. First by crimping on a stinger, then feeding in to a tensioning sleeve on this post. Then, just a little over a day after I started this project, I had a completely updated area in my house. The system is so much more modern than my last, and in person, it's drastic how much it seems to have opened up my space. Not only looking towards the stairs in the living room, but also coming up the stairs. So if you have any railing needs, whether that's replacing outdated stuff or needing new railing for a new project, then definitely check out View Rail. Again, there are tons of color options to make the look exactly what you're going for. And as you can see, it is simple to install. I hope that you feel inspired after watching this video and I'll see you on whatever I'm tackling next. Don't judge me for this. <laughs>